Brand new in DaVinci Resolve 19 is one small update um, that won't, that isn't, you know, as flashy as a lot of other big stuff in Resolve 19, but is very useful and appreciated uh, to myself and people like me, people who are really into the text animation engine inside Resolve. And this update makes animation like this easier than ever. Let me show it off and talk about it for a bit. Okay, uh, I'm on an open timeline here in Resolve 19. I'm gonna drag a uh, text plus uh, effect to my timeline. Type in something like, what did I say? Animation like this. And then in my inspector for that effect, I'm gonna click this little icon to open it in the Fusion page. Now, I am going to be calling this word by word animation, um, but that isn't 100% accurate and I will explain why. Um, but depending on how you rig the animation, it will look and function exactly like word by word animation. But there's just, you know, caveats. Okay, I'm here in the Fusion page. I have this template node, which is my text plus node. And then that goes into the media out. Anything you do in Fusion, if it gets plugged into the media out, that is what shows up on the edit page. So in my template, I have an animation like this. I'm gonna right click in this window and select the follower. That will enable this modifiers tab. And if I click over to it, I have the follower. The follower is the main animation engine for the text plus tool and uh, new in Resolve 19 for the S text tool. Very excited about that. And as a side note, um, all of these uh, uh, modifier options you have on a text plus are there on uh, the S text. So if you're, you wanna scramble something or have the follower animation or use time code, it's there ready to go in S text, very cool. But the standard follower modifier has a few basic controls, um, primarily this order, delay type, and delay. And you'll also notice we have a few tabs. We have text, transform, and shading. And if I go back to the main tools window, you see we have this text, transform, and shading. And these are actual duplicates of these tabs uh, with select changes mostly on text, but inside this modifier. But if I come over to something like transform, I have this offset, which I can change to words. Uh, and if I move that, nothing at all happens in this window. Whereas if I go back to tools and I've transform, if I change the offset here, it is actually moving it. The controls on the main tools section are you know the actual controls uh, for uh, this text plus tool. The copy you see in the follower modifier, that it will selectively overwrite the tools you see on the text plus tool once you add animation based on the uh, values and controls you set up in the timing section. So this order control here, it's uh, by default automatic, which is left to right. Although I guess probably also depending on your language settings, because you do have separate settings for left to right, right to left, inside out, outside in, random, but one by one, completely random, so simultaneous, or a manual curve. Manual curve um, is powerful, but a little more complicated. We're gonna leave that for now, and I'm just gonna leave this on automatic. On delay type, I love this. You have the options between between each character and between first and last character. So I'm pulling this delay up to 12 frames. And I haven't set up any, any animation yet, but when I do, um, with this set between each character, it's gonna execute that animation, wait 12 frames, then execute that next animation on the next character, and then keep going. Uh, but if you change this to between first and last character, it will do all that math that your entire animation, or at least the time between the first and last character start acting out that animation will be 12 seconds. This is very powerful, especially if you are building out presets where you want your animation to always take the same amount of length, regardless of how many characters are in uh, your text field. So we're doing between first and last and delay. Okay, here is the actual change that came in Resolve 19. Uh, I kind of showed it off earlier, some of you might cut it. If I hop over to transform, we have this offset control. Previously, this was a pivot control, which is, you know, valuable if you want to like rotate from a certain pivot point, um, but there was no, you know, offset or center or position control here inside this transform tab. And that's important because we have this transform selection between characters, words, and lines. Now, very quick, let me demonstrate. If I set this back to characters and at frame zero, uh, I set a keyframe uh, that will generate a path. You can always hop back to follower. And I just drag this down, come up a few frames and bring this back up. I keyframed on character, so it will execute 
that first move on the first character, and 12 seconds later, it will start that move on the last character. And you got a little whoop, cool little animation. And hey, let me build this out first too. I'm gonna come to the shading tab and on opacity for this first shading element, I only have one shading element. I'm gonna keyframe that as well, going from zero to one. So now as that uh, text slides, it also uh, fades in. And hey, that's a fine little animation. I would add easing and a whole bunch of other stuff, cool. So this position slide and the uh, opacity animating on happen sort of like linearly across this path. Um, and this is interesting because I want you to take note of this. I'm gonna get rid of this offset. Uh, I'll copy this value first. I'm gonna double click to get rid of that. So now it only fades in, right? But I'm gonna change this up to words. Set this other keyframe, come forward, set that keyframe and then back down it is sliding to that previous value. And uh, now I am moving the words and this will do something pretty interesting. You see now, this is word by word animation. But if you look closely, you'll notice that fade is still happening on individual characters because that fade is over on the shading tab, uh, which still handles everything character by character. And this is where I need to explain things because it is still animating character by character. It is just selectively holding <laughs> the animation for uh, all the characters in a, in a word and executing the move for this transform section uh, at the same time for all the characters in that select word. So we end up with word by word animation, but uh, the fade is still individual characters. The position slide, you know, is much more dramatic. So I think this definitely feels much more like word by word animation and then character by character animation. And hey, while we're at it, let's hop over uh, to that displacement and go ahead and give this some nice easing and hit that opacity as well. That will always make things feel cool. I'm not being precise at all, but now we got a nice little animation like this. Snappy, snappy. And for something that's quick, I might, you know, hop back and pull down that timing. Maybe something like eight frames for that. So it's just like whoosh, whoosh. And hey, word by word animation. Previously, something like this was possible, but you needed to finagle that pivot and actually mess with like the X scale, different things. Now you just set up that animation. Uh, make sure you change this transform sort of layer from characters to words. Doing this on lines will be really interesting as well, as long as you are okay um, with the fade still happening sequentially. That's really the only thing keeping this from, that will, you know, give away the game. But like um, in that demo where I had things slide from off screen, if you don't fade at all, then this will look like pure straight word by word animation. Now, I'm sure some of you wanna dive in and start making this yourself, but if you just wanna mess around with some pre-built word by word titles, hey, um, I threw together three of them that you know are crazy basic. I'm gonna give them away for free over on my store page. Link to that will be in the description. Um, I'm doing the one I showed off that comes up from the bottom, one with a fade and then one with a fade. And uh, I do this uh, word level of rotation. So it does kind of a little, it's pretty cool. Hey, I have it here somewhere. This guy, check it out. Pretty cool and easier than ever before with a sneaky little update, just changing one little thing in the follower modifier. But hey, every update is an update. Um, so for some people, hey, this might be the biggest thing in Resolve 19 for them, um, but probably not. There's some other cool stuff. Uh, uh, other videos out about all the other new stuff or out or coming soon, depending on when you're watching. Grab those free word by word titles in the description. And don't forget to check out the other of dozens, you know, both free and paid uh, presets, templates, and plugins over on the website, sterlingsupply.co. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.